thanks for uh, joining me today. I'll give you a quick uh, corporate overview of what Barkerville Gold Mines entails as the head geologist now running the corporate development side. So if you have any technical questions, please come find me at the booth later on. Everyone's seen this statement. I'm not going to go into great detail on that. Um, what we did when we inherited this company, basically inherited the company in 2015, uh, bought out Eric's share, and now it's basically, we call it internally as Osisco West. It's a two-stage approach. Basically, we have near-term near production right now, producing uh, 30,000 30, ounces per annum, uh, and increasing that by 2020 to about 150, 200,000 ounces per annum. This is basically our platform as uh, Osisco West. We're also looking at value accretive assets throughout Western Canada, that being British Columbia and, and the Yukon. Uh, basically the leadership, strong management team is basically the Mining Hall of Fame. Most of you people know who Sean Rusin is. He's the founder of Osisco. Anthony McCooch was the uh, director for Kirkland Lake Gold and the CEO. Uh, John Brzezinski, another founding member of the Osisco group. Uh, Chris Loader is our president and CEO. He couldn't be here today. He's up at site. Uh, Thomas Obradovich was uh, one of the founders of Aurelian, which was uh, the Forte del Norte discovery. Andre St. Germain, she's the CFO of Integra. Morris Pritchitney is with uh, Nighthawk and Northfield Capital. And then John Sabine and John Kukovic are uh, our lawyers. Basic share structure, about 434,000. Uh, 434 million shares outstanding, uh, have a cash position of about 58 million right now, that's probably down to about 56. 52-week uh, range from 40 to $1.39, currently trading at about 73 cents, market cap of about 313 million. Uh, share structure is pretty tight, only 35% float on the stock. Uh, the Osisco Group owns 52% of the company, with major institutional shareholders of uh, M&G out of London, Board of Management 3%, 3% Century, 3%, JP Morgan, Tocqueville 2%, Massachusetts Mutual, which is Oppenheimer, with 1% and RBC with 1%. Uh, what are you going to see for news flow uh, coming in 2018? This year we'll do all about 127,000 meters. We're going to start commercial production at Bonanza Ledge. Like I said, that'll be about 30,000 ounces uh, this year. That generates about 10 to $15 million in after-tax cash flow to offset the cost of the larger project. Uh, we'll continue our resource delineation drilling, uh, that being on Cowan Island Mountain. We'll do about 90,000 meters there. Uh, on the regional upside, we'll do about 30,000 uh, meters there. What is the Caribou Gold Project? We're located in uh, central British Columbia, about 440 uh, kilometers as the crow flies from Vancouver. Uh, it was historically mined. It was discovered in 1858. It was the home of the largest uh, placer uh, district in British Columbia. So the San Francisco rush people came up from San Francisco into Barkerville and then moved over onto the Klondike. Uh, hard Rock, uh, the Hard Rock discovery was founded in 1922. Uh, commercial production started in 1933 and there was about 1.2 million ounces in, in Hard Rock production. We own the, the entire land package outright. There's about just under 2,000 square kilometers of mineral rights. We also have a fully permitted mill, which is the Quinnell River property. It's 110 kilometers away. It does about 875 ton per day, and it has 965,000 tons of tailings capacity. Uh, this is a brownfield site. Uh, there's about 148 kilometers of underground development. Uh, a lot of this development can't be used for, for the new larger project, so we're putting in our own underground development. But what it can do is it guides us for our exploration and for our, for our drilling programs. So we can go underground, map and sample, and use that as a guide for our exploration drilling so it cuts down our cost per discoverable ounce. Uh, what did we do uh, last year? We did 157,000 meters, primarily in the Island Mountain and Cow Mountain. We did about 470 meters of development from the Bonanza Ledge mine. Is this a laser pointer? Right down here. Um, we will start commercial production, like I said, from there earlier, probably in February, mid-February 2018. And we're going to release a new resource, uh, Q2 2018. I'm sure people have heard about the story, and there's a lot of dubious resource estimates out. Uh, 
primarily because they used the wrong resource estimation method. So we've basically thrown everything out and done everything internally, and we'll be releasing that in uh, Q2 2018. Uh, what are we doing for 2018 and 2020? Like I said, continue an aggressive delineation uh, drilling campaign. Do about 30,000 of regional upside drilling. Uh, we'll start our underground development for the larger project, which is Cowan Island, starting right here. That'll allow us to have an underground drill uh, platform to reduce our, our cost per discoverable ounce. It'll also allow us to take a bulk sample. We'll do about 10,000 tons in, in 2019. So it'll help us a lot with a feasibility study that should be submitted for the larger project in 2019. This is just a principal uh, section. Basically, if I cut that lengthwise right along here, this is what it looks like. It's important that the, the camp was historically mined for the load production and replacement. Uh, we've taken a new approach because we put a new uh, geological model to the story. These are not individual veins that they historically mined in the past. These are mineralized vein corridors that are made up of 20 to 100 veins. And the veins range from 10 to you know, 100 gram per ton. Uh, but what we do is we bulk them out so we can you know, use large mechanized equipment underground and cut down our, our, our mining costs. So you're, you know, each corridor, like I'll show you in the next section, ranges from three to 30 meters in width, two to 400 in strike, and 400 to 600 in, in vertical depth. Uh, they'll have a diluted grade of about six and a half gram per ton. This is uh, an important thing to note that this is just six kilometers of the 67 that we call it. Uh, we can apply this model to the entire district and that's why we're so excited about it. This is what I was talking about. This is a, what a typical vein corridor will look like, made up of multiple vein sets. This is a cross section basically cutting this line. Uh, it's a little bit tough to see the grades, I apologize, but you know, you're looking at widths from, like I said, 10 to 30 meters in width, and you know, anywhere from six to 20 gram per ton in that width. I'll just take you now looking across uh, a corridor, so taking you across this section, just to show you the continuity um, of these vein sets. So that's basically your corridor made up of the multiple veins. So you have about, like I said, two to 400 in strike, four to 600 in vertical depth, and again, about three to 30 in, in width. Um, I don't, we don't really want to touch on this too much. This is what I was saying about our smaller mine production that we have. It's about three, uh, three and a half years of, of resources, 158,900 ounces left in it. Um, it's a wholly uh, underground operation. We're using contract miners right now. But an important thing to note is that this is basically a test mine for us. It does generate some cash flow, about 10 to 15 a million in after-tax cash flow. We're using this as a test mine so that we can help us for basically our, our, our mine dilution. It trains the local workforce and gets the community used to mining again. That's the, the main objective of this. This is the new geological model we put together. This is why we got so excited about the project. Uh, I won't bore you guys with uh, the in-depth geology and talking about L-tectonites and S1s and S2s. But basically what this model says and what no one could figure out before is that all the vein systems are hosted in these undulating, what we call F3 folds. They're produced by the last deformation event. Historically what they do is they'd mine one single vein or mine one stope of these replacement mineralization. What our model is is mining the whole nose so that you can use large mechanized mining equipment underground versus a transverse long hole or long hole with the cemented rock fill. So that's what I was saying, each one of these veins can any beer be from 10 to you know, 100 gram per ton, but when you block the whole thing out and make a mineralized corridor, that's what I was saying about you make about six and a half uh, diluted grade. Just on the regional upside, so you guys can see that this isn't just a, uh, uh, you know, a three deposit type of area. This is a mineral district. That's why we're so excited about it. It's 100% owned. All these circles are basically those fold noses that you saw in the previous slide. 
So they have a periodicity of about every 500 to 1,000 meters. Within each, the, each, on each of those noses, there, there are these mineralized corridors. These are basically all our drill targets that we'll be drilling off for the next uh, five to 10 years. Uh, we're fully financed till 2019, like I said, 58 million in the bank and no debt. Thank you very much.